Prasanna, founder and managing partner of Pillar Iron Pillar Fund, to give his talk on Building from India for the World. Please join me in welcoming him on the stage. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you very much for inviting me to this forum, especially um, Your Excellencies. Thank you very much for spending your time getting to know about uh, the India story and how that connects to the innovation story in the region. So a few important facts, like you know, sometimes I do get surprised that uh, some of the, the changes of scale of the India opportunity had not been well noticed. So just putting some of the things outside. India, which is a closed economy till around 1991, even though we got independence in 1947, in 91, we opened up the economy. At that point of time, it was just a $270 billion economy. That's it. And today, it's a $3.2 trillion economy from that place. So this is a significant amount of growth, almost 9% compounding every year over 30 years. That's actually what India have achieved. And in this process, I've become the fifth largest economy in the world. But... Along with that, what's really happening and is more interesting is in the next decade or within the next decade, this is going to become almost an $8 trillion economy. This is almost as half as what China was in 2020. So here is some data in terms of where some of these big numbers uh, of GDP, etc. is looking, at, looking like. So, but talking about technology and the piece of it today, India the total technology market capitalization in India is still 7.5 percentage of the total market, of the total GDP, compared to where it is in the U.S. and China. So as the third largest tech market in the world, there is still, along with the growth in the GDP, there is also a lot of catch-up of the value created out of technology as part of that GDP, which is going to happen in the coming decade in India, which is probably almost a trillion dollar of value creation opportunity from the country. Another important piece, which like I'm not going to go through each piece of these statistics because there is quite a lot of you know, these numbers, but one important thing which I want to talk about is there is more than 10,000 startups which are funded in the country at this point of time. And that is a very large number of founders who are actually coming out of India who are building products and services and everything tech, which can be actually interesting as we go forward in this conversation. Now, what is the scale of some of these things? There is $130 billion companies which are built out of India. That's clearly the third largest market for unicorns in the world. More than half a trillion dollars of value created from these 130 companies. And out of these 130 companies, one other important piece is 50% of them went from their first funding to a billion dollar outcome within a period of five years, which actually is again talks about the speed at which the ecosystem is getting built. So around 65 of these companies went from zero to a billion within five years time period, which is which it, it's really a tremendous space. Uh, the space is clearly finding a lot more of capital, which is being attracted like in the last year, around $25 billion of capital was invested in tech in India. Now, one important piece which I want to kind of talk about is how does this connect to the technology innovation ecosystem, et cetera, in here. So what we do in Iron Pillar is we meet around 400 companies every year and pick 40 of these 400 businesses, which we can help them scale beyond India. And that beyond India piece, mainly for enterprise SaaS businesses, but also in some cases, it's consumer-related businesses like food, there's businesses in the space of education tech, et cetera, where we scale these businesses either in the Middle East or in the US. So almost half of that 130 companies, 130 unicorns, which you heard about like an earlier in the previous slide, they are actually building beyond India. And this is something which is quite unique for the Indian market. So Indian founders are very, very open and interested in scaling beyond India as a specific market. And we are... We have created a funnel of around 40 companies which we every year help in getting to that place. In fact, we invest eventually into three, four of these businesses from our funds. 
And Ironpilla, we have, I can just give you a few examples of some of these things which we have done in Ironpilla, which could be interesting. And since we are talking about the Middle East, there's a company called Unifor. It's a, it's a, it's one of the best speech AI businesses. So we talked a lot about AI. How do you use AI in specific use cases? So this particular company, they use AI bots, which can actually work. These are speech AI bots, so they can be in a conversation, whether it is a call center, which is operating and say, you are an insurance company. Now, you have a client calling in for a particular product, and there's a bunch of things which need to be checked up before a particular product is sold to this customer. And there are regulatory reasons why you have to give a bunch of disclaimers. And imagine if one particular disclaimer was not told in a particular conversation, that's a cause of potentially something where somebody can get a serious fine. How do you avoid that? You have a uniform bot in the background, which listen to that entire conversation, make sense of the speech. And if a particular, uh, like uh, a disclaimer was not said in that conversation, then it actually stopped that transaction and says, you need to re-disclose this disclaimer. It was not clear, whatever is the case. So it's a, it's a very interesting use case and Unifor have hundreds of similar use cases. And similar use cases are actually being deployed now in companies in the Middle East. They have Arabic language training, which they have done uh, over the last couple of years. We're very happy to also say that investors from the region, including ADQ, are, and, and also uh, a couple of other large sovereign funds from the MENA region have actually been investors there. We have another company called Fresh to Home, which is revolutionizing the entire food supply chain, especially in proteins for fish and meat. This is somewhere where ADQ and uh, ICD had been investors. So even Dubai Inc. had been a shareholder here and a big supporter of this company, which is again currently generating around 20% of its revenue from here. Recently, Amazon led a new round in this business. So these are a couple of examples. Now, I'm not going to go into details of how some of these businesses are actually scaling up in this market in this part of the world. But interestingly, like these are not the most important takeaway for some of these companies are they are generating 15, 20 percentage of their global revenue from the Middle East. So it's a meaningful market, not just to kind of come and do a bunch of R&D or something, but actually to generate customers and also generate data, which is valuable for them to like expand into the larger Arabic market using UAE or say, a space to grow. So quick uh, landscape about if you are looking for partners to work in India, in in, uh, in in the tech market, this is the landscape of a lot of uh, fund managers. So interestingly, like very few of them focus on the B2B SaaS space, but quite a lot of them focus on the consumer tech space and very welcome to kind of in also introduce you and connect you to some of these uh, partners or early stage funds, etc. in India who are interested in looking at how do they expand into the Middle Eastern market. Uh, Veena and Pilla, we have a couple of funds, uh, a global cloud fund and a B2C and B2B fund, but and, and with a very deep team uh, which invest in this region. But very important aspect about our team is we are the first fund in India which has established an office in the Middle East in 2019. Uh, we chose Dubai as our partner for doing this. Four out of our seven partners are actually based in Dubai. So we have the single largest office for any Indian fund in the region. And that is actually a big advantage for us. And one of the things which we are doing now, uh, Merzi, who is actually the leader of WSBF, is a venture partner with us. And with him, we are partnering to see how we can put together a vehicle where more and more Indian technology companies, which are scaled up, can grow into the Middle Eastern market. So this is something which we are again looking to kind of bring in. Um, uh, to close out, I'm talking about um, the final piece where, where do we help? We do help in BD. We do help in go to market, which is actually finding the right partners and executives and also strategic capital networks for Indian founders in both the US and the MENA markets and any Anyone out here who would, would, interest, would be interested in partnering with us and also a large network of people, technology executives globally, that could be an interesting place for us to um, partner with you. Um, 
this final page on some of our investors, etc., whom we have historically partnered with. Especially in the region, I want to kind of specifically mention some of the large family offices and some sovereign wealth funds are partners with us in this journey. Thank you.